Mary's University. The atmosphere is absolutely palpable. James, what do you have in store for us this evening? It's going to be one heck of a game of rugby. Both of these teams have had their own roads and own paths to this point. Opposite ends of the country, opposite talent pools, opposite conferences. Everybody has their own opinion on which conference is better or not. We're going to find out tonight where the best talent from either conference is going head to head in what will be an epic battle. Absolutely exciting, James. We're going to take it down to Dan, the manpower, for a match report before the game. Thanks very much, Colin. Let me tell you, the atmosphere here is absolutely electric. Championship rugby, this is what it's all going to be about. We have 46 men, two halves of rugby. There can be only one champion. I am on tenor hooks here waiting for this game to start. I cannot wait. The crowd is an absolute bumper. Standing room only here at the Stanford University. I can't wait, boys. This is going to be a great match. Thanks so much, Dan. Great words of wisdom from Dan there, getting ready to get this match started. You have two ex-Eagles as head coaches in Coach Tim O'Brien for the St. Mary's Gales and Dan Payne for Life University. Payne, actually our coach at the 2011 World Cup as a continuity coach. You know he's going to get his life boys ready to play for this big matchup. You know they're going to bring it. We know we're gonna, where they're going to bring it. He prides himself on full play. Those forwards are going to counter every ruck they can and they're going to win ball to enable their backs to go out and do their jobs. St. Mary's, as we know, is more known for their back play, not so much for the forward play. So we have two counter strengths fighting off in what's going to be a great battle. Absolutely. Right now, we're going to have the national anthem sung by Petty Officer First Class Stephen Powell from the Navy Recruiting District in San Francisco. So proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rampart we watch who were so gallantly. And that's with Petty Officer Stephen First Powell. Class Stephen Powell. He's going to get us underway here. Ah, James, I still get goosebumps hearing the national anthem before a big match like this. Oh, same, same. I can't imagine what's running through these guys' minds right now. This is the culmination of a year's work from preseason training, the blood, sweat, and tears they've given to Ladies get to this point. This is what it's all about. It all comes what down to this, doesn't it? Both teams absolutely Mary's jacked up to play here. Life the atmosphere is electric. Now the scouting report on these two sides, St. Mary's, an incredible season, beating both Cal and BYU in regular season play. Their backs are absolutely explosive. Looking at their back line, Garrett Brewer slotting in at number 10. He's getting national team looks currently right now, but Kingsley McGowan, also a, a member who's been visited by the, the Sevens, seven squad look out for him to have a great presence here and look out for bubba jones on the wing he's actually james jones making a look at a big impact dan payne's squad you have an all-american front row in hollis amatagi and walker should be a great massive matchup of positive forward forward play from life and explosive back play from saint mary's 
our ref, Arona Ranawira, about to get us underway. Looks like Xander Daniels taking the kick. Nope, that would be 15, Joe Cowley. Well taken by St. Mary's. Looks like could have been turned over there by Life. Not a good sign for St. Mary's early on. The forwards are going to work right now. Strong carry by Glenn Maselli. Probing the short side, playing both sides of the field. This will be a real feeling out moment where they're testing out the inside defensive channels. Blaine McElroy finds Glenn Marcelli. McElroy going out to his fly half. Can't handle the pass. Ron Aurelio says play on. Penalty for not releasing. Penalty against St. Mary's. Great start to life getting in within the Gales half and getting a penalty. Joe Cowley, the 15, has been deemed as the best foot in America. Forget college rugby, we're talking about America. I'd like to see his kicking boots right now and see if they're gonna go for points. Yeah, and it's gonna be real costly today. Any penalties that you give up within a 40 meter zone are gonna get punished. Yeah, you'd wonder what his range would be right now. With the wind at his back, you would say, I have to say 40 meters plus. Oh, easily, easily. St. Mary's need to do a better job handling that initial kickoff. They met here last year, life being the victors on that occasion. Joe Kelly missing on this occasion. Yeah, just pulled it left. It's going to be difficult in these conditions with the wind. We got a 22 meter drop coming out. Kingsley calling for a ball. Ron Aware having a stoppage here. Now we have Garrett Brewer, the fly half with the ball. If you were Brewer, I guess you want to pump this thing downfield, which he does. What a booming kick. Straight into touch. Yeah, costly mistake there. It's going to give him an option to come all the way back for that scrum. That's prime attacking opportunity, midfield scrum. Not even five minutes into the game. Life will want to come away from this area of the field with points. Life was unlucky not to make that kick, but now a great attacking platform, scrum in the middle of the field. We talked about their forwards. They're all American front row. Obviously, they're looking to have a good platform here to get on the front foot and get on the scoreboard early against the St. Mary's Gales. You can see here the split. You've got Cowley on one side. Also on the other side, you've got Clement on the left side. So you've got a dual threat here. Look for an 8-9, either direction. I think he'd want to hit Joe Cowley and Xander Von Skalkwick. half arm penalty here. Play on, they say. Reavy takes the quick tap. St. Mary's forwards, happy to do the hard yards. Ron Oera. Not rolling away by life. Get out of jail. Free card for St. Mary's here. That's not what life wants to do. When they pin down St. Mary's, they want to be able to get points on the board, knowing how explosive and dangerous these backs are. What a booming kick from Brewer. Look, on the, look, on, look at the leg on Brewer. He's wearing number 22. He is the 10, but amazing touch finder there, getting a lot of purchase on that kick. Yeah, and he's got great talent. I mean, he's already been involved in Eagle Assemblies, and he'll look to bring that experience to a game like this. Now, looking at the forward play, I want to see the set-piece matchup, and Life takes it away. We talked about how dangerous the Life forward pack would be under, under coach Dan Payne. Looking to take the ball on that occasion. St. Mary's set up in defense. They're nine. Blaine McElroy looking for a box kick. Well chased by number 11, Tyrus Baytops. Oh, superb take by the back. Excellent take by the fullback. Wonderful stuff there from Cooper Maloney. St. Mary's maintain possession. If they get the ball left, they have numbers. Brewer out the back, cannot find the hands of his number 12. Jones cleaning Dylan up the Osley. ball. Jones is cleaning up the ball at the back. Good strong carry here. Unlucky there not to get around the corner. They had the numbers. You'd wonder how many opportunities St. Mary's will have like that against this life side. Great steal there by Life. Excellent work at the breakdown. Life forward's going to work. Blaine gets the ball out, shifts it out to the number 12, Takutella. 
to the 15. Joe Kelly gets well tackled. Puts the ball back to Blaine. Blaine finds his number three, Zach Walker, the All-American. He busts it up forward. Blaine hard at work, finding his forwards, doing the hard yards. Happy to keep it tight right now, finding his forward runners and going forward. There's the number seven, Hikumalu, put in a big pain. There you go, number five. Number five, Jake Anderson, has been the best player, according to Dan Payne, with ball in hand. Look for him to have a breakout match here in this national championship final. Just feeling out St. Mary's defense, running that swinging gate attack. Whoa! Oh, strong carry up the middle. Harris Hollis making his presence felt here early on. Well done. You can see the power of this, this well-experienced forward pack just going to work right now against the smaller St. Mary's. St. Mary's definitely had their number against them, against BYU and Cal. Happy to get wins on that occasion, but this team is absolutely massive. Ball pulled out the back there to Baytops. Oh, but it's turned turned over. Over. Kingsley. Kingsley with the ball. Absolutely crucial turnover, the nine. Straight down Cali. Let's Reedy. see what he does, coming back at the line. Running oh, hard with great purpose. Tackle. Well Luke taken. Saucer. Luke Saucer Excellent with a great work. tackle. And he's stolen the ball, St. Mary's ball. Attacking forward, St. Mary's with a big lineup out to the right. Brewer looking to get the ball out to his nine. Ron O'Weara called live for not releasing the tackler on the deck. St. Mary's, great job St. Mary's to fight back off the turnover from Kingsley McGowan. Great stuff from the 13 there. Brewer, we oh. talked about his leg before. Right-footed kicker, a little bit of a harder angle here. Excellent kick already today. Saucer at the breakdown. Number six has been a real menace. Here's the replay coming in. The All-American Paris Hollis. Oh no, we got Joe Kelly making a little shimmy step and getting well tackled by Luke Saucer and the turnover there. Look at the great counter ruck St. Mary's has been putting in. Just great playing the loose. Ball at the backs. Life's on the ball here. They managed to hold it up off of the line out. St. Mary's has a great steep line set on the outside. Brewer's called for this ball, he wants it. You know they're trying to get it out to their backs, how dangerous they are. They need the touches out wide. Excellent work there by Life. They were able to get around the ball and hold the player up. The ball wasn't playable. In that situation, ball goes to the defensive side. We've seen that a lot this week in a tactic teams have been using and the player goes high in the tackle. Two players will pinch underneath the ball, holding it up, causing the turnover penalty. It's a great option. Life put in. We got Blaine McElroy. He's English born. He's been one of their breakout backs this season. Clemens for eagerly play. awaiting the ball here. It doesn't look like they're in a position to kick. It looks like they're wanting to attack from this position in the field. Referee Ron O'Reara has a word. We're gonna go down down to Dan, the manpower, and find the match update from the side of the field. Dan? Boys, how about this start? The intensity from both teams is absolutely explosive down here. I've been super impressed with Brewer, the fly half from St. Mary's, controlling the tempo very, very well. From life, their big prop there on that great run. Their forward pack is dominating. It's great stuff from both teams. Back to you, boys. Thank you very much, Dan. Dan playing fly half in his time. He was a great kicker, absolutely. Had a few tryouts with some NFL teams for being a punter, ex-USA Eagle. Wonderful to have him here on the sideline giving us match updates. Back to the game, we have Ron O'Rear blowing it up, bringing it back down for a reset of the scrum. Blaine McElroy looking to put it in again. Steep line set here by the live back line. We got number 10, Talib Clemente. He's in the box, he's ready to go. He wants this pill. Looks like it's going out to the backs. Backs ball coming up here. Taleb has the ball, gets out to his 13. Harley Davidson, and he just crashes it up, runs straight into the number 12. Looking to come back down 12. the blind side here. Excellent positioning. Great strong carry by the All-American. Blaine looking for the box kick option, and he takes it. No oh, one wants Kelly. it. Misses with the air and kick, but well covered. Excellent work by Maloney to clean up that loose ball. 
They want to settle things down here. They won't want to play out of their own half. Joe Reeby finding Brewer. Brewer's going to find space out the back. Excellent kick. kick. Low kick into the wind. Couldn't ask for a better kick and a great chase. Putting real pressure on live. Oh, they decided to go for it. What a sidestep. That's amazing work from Tyrus Baytops. He finds a 13 inside. Great work, Harley, Harley Davidson. Davidson. And he oh, spills it forward. Unlucky turnover from a great counterattack. You thought St. Mary's might have had that bottled up with two players coming down on them, one of them being Kingsley McGowan. But no, that was awesome. Tyrus Baytops, great inside step, like a winger does, dancing on the sideline, bringing it down, and life just there in support. Wonderful counterattack. Probably going to make Garrett Brewer think once or twice before he sends that kick and not finding touch. Yeah, excellent. Especially the chase was up there. You can see here that Baytop steps off. Great pace and effort. And you watch McElroy supporting him on the inside. Excellent work downfield. Unfortunately, Harley Davidson, as he's trying to break through the tackle and offload, loses the ball. That's going to be the difference in those games. It's those moments like that. If he can hold on to that ball, real pressure against St. Mary's. That was a great cover tackle by James Jones coming from the other side of the wing to make that ball and make him spill it forward. St. Mary's is looking to hustle here, but life forwards are going to work. Happy to keep it tight right now. Life going to work in the engine room and getting some good purchase here. Happy to keep it slow. You see Blaine there marshalling his forwards. He's like a sheepdog, nipping at the heels of his steers, beckoning him to go forward. Excellent work, McElroy at the base. Now they go wide to Taleb. He finds his 12, Takutila. He's well tackled. Aaron pass out to Xander. Xander does well to move around a little bit, get back inside to his support. Blaine to the number eight. Glenn Marcelli. Excellent work. Cowley, Cowley stepping up in the line, distributing. They're looking to get Whoa, the ball Bay wide tops. here. He's been dangerous. Baytoff showing again he can beat his defender. A great competition out on that left wing side. Life is finding structure and pattern right now. And you can tell, James, right now, they're feeling the flow, doing the bull dance, and getting on the good front foot right now. Yeah, they're in no rush here. They know they're a Dan Payne coach team. They're excellent at the breakdown. They'll win their own ball. They're Absolutely. not in any hurry to score. Oh, a little bit of an errant pass. Xander getting tackled by, by James Jones, and he puts in a great counterattack, kicking and fighting, get the ball, and they get it, turnover. Hit the inside center, number 12, Dylan Aldsley. Little bit of a messy ruck there, but getting the ball out to Brewer. Brewer quick hands to Kingsley. Kingsley's got real estate. He's dangerous. Oh, oh off the back, back inside. Bill Williams out the back door. Cooper Maloney. Reeve needs on. to get rid of this ball. Unfortunate there. Tensions are high. There's a bit of pushing <laughs> and shoving. That's what finals footy's all about. Kingsley is jacked up right now. Some of the names we mentioned early on, how dangerous these backs are. Look at Brewer finally Kingsley going down the pitch. Doesn't have the sport that he wants. Goes straight in it. Look at the backwards pass here to the 15. Cooper Maloney. Great Unlucky. Work. Unlucky and not to get that ball back. In the but process of trying to place that ball, he lost it. But real pressure, real tipsy-turvy game so far. James, that was about five meters on the weak side that they created that break. That's how dangerous these backs are. Pretty impressive stuff for St. Mary's. They get back down on life. Life's in. Life has had most of the possession in their territory. Let's see if they can actually get something going here, but it's life scrum. And we've got to really watch this scrum. This All-American front row is putting so much pressure on St. Mary's. They're continuously standing up. There it life. goes again. The pressure comes on from life. Life by far the bigger forward pack. Great spin move by number eight. Glenn Marcelli, they go back to find Cali, the sure foot of Cali. He Callie. puts in a great, great kick, and it goes in a touch just past the halfway. Great touch finder to bounce the ball inbounds and roll the touch. Field position is going to be very important today, Colin. Oh, absolutely. Both teams are going to want to play rugby down the other end of the field. The it, stakes are going to be costly. This is an absolute exciting kicking matchup between Brewer. We saw that how much real estate he gets with his kicks, and Cali didn't. Cowley deemed the best foot in America. Little loose at the back of that. St. Mary's has the ball. Maybe to Brewer. Look. 
Brewer, he goes to Kingsley. He's been dangerous. Kingsley's showing he can run hard with the ball and with purpose. Davidson with a great hit on Kingsley. St. Mary's Ford's going to work in the engine room. Keeping it tight, maintaining possession, nearing the halfway mark. Probing again down the short side. Always a threat, Reeve, from nine. St. Mary's keeping it tight. Brewer out to the left, getting his back line set up. Ron Awira blows it up. Obstruction. Live ball at the halfway. What do you think of the start so far, Colin? It's been pretty great back and forth here, James. I'm pretty impressed from both sides. From the scouting report that we've had, we knew the St. Mary's backs were going to be dangerous. They've shown us that so far. We knew the live forwards with Coach Dan Payne and his continuity prowess were going to be dangerous as well, especially with the three All-Americans in the front row. Jake Anderson has been their best player at lock. We knew that they were going to try to establish their dominance pretty early on. It's just a great matchup right now. Absolutely. Could go either way. To feed, solid scrum again from live. McElroy to Clement, looking on the, running a nice unders line there. Nice unders line from Davidson. We got number six, Xander Daniels taking the ball up. Getting a great penetration on that run. Here we go, the number seven. Steaming into the defense. Hiko Malu coming in hot. Callie to Takutila. He finds Harley, Harley. Excellent turn of pace by Harley. Down the left hand side. Excellent work by Baytops again, showing his tough to put down. They've got him held up here. Can they get the ball back? Field position. No, they can't. Life again, threatening within the Gales 22 and turning the ball over, getting, giving the Gales a get out of jail free card here. You just see the life has been having most of the territory in the Gales in. They just have not been converting that to points right now. You think how many opportunities you're going to have, you know, with bottling up these dangerous St. Mary's back line. You're going to want to get points on the board as soon as possible. Exactly. I've been really impressed, really impressed with Joe Cowley. He's showing his experience. He's coming up in the playmaker's role wherever he can. Down the short side, that whole thing was initiated. Him coming up from fullback and releasing the speed outside. He's doing Excellent a great work. job, filling in where he's needed. We got the nine out to Brewer. Brewer, they're deciding to run with this. A little adventurous. Play. We know that's how St. Mary's love to play. Kingsley spinning and getting his way up to the 22. Offside, deemed no advantage. Life being penalized. James, that's the one thing you don't want to do. When you got a team backed up within their own 22, you don't want to give him an easy penalty, so Garrett Brewer has a chance to put one of these booming kicks down there and relieve the pressure. Here we go again. We're going to look at this replay coming up in a second, showing Kingsley McGowan again, coming out, running hard. Enterprising play, though, Colin. Seems risky at this stage of the game. That's the exciting thing about St. Mary's Rugby. They will be willing to play from literally anywhere. They back themselves, they back their play. They'll give it a go just like we just saw at their goal line. So you can't go ahead and take a phase off and expect them to kick it. If they see something, they're gonna go for it just like they're doing here. Finding Kingsley at the back, finding James Jones. He cuts back inside, one, Excellent two, three defenders. Runs smack bang straight into the number eight. Maricelli put in a good tackle there. Going down weak side to Kingsley. He does another out the back pass that does not go to hand. Pretty adventurous right outside the 22. Brewer stepping in at nine, finding the 12. Dylan Audsley. Playing pretty adventurous. They have numbers on the weak side. They want to play. Kingsley taking it forward again. Only five meters of space down there on that near side touchline. Ravy looking for the ball. Brewer setting up on the right side. He's probably going to send this one. Coming to the line, a little indecision there from Brewer. Thought he was going to go for it. Then he decided to kick a little too late. St. Mary's did Anyone's well to get ball. that ball St. back St. Mary's there. ball, really lucky to get that ball back. Wasn't the best decision there. There's number one, Ryan Pratt getting his hands on the ball. The big forwards having a rumble through. Reeve doing a great job marshalling his forwards. Great job here, excellent job. Cowley will seriously consider that this is within his range. He's walking up with authority. 
Not a great penalty there. Dino Waldron called for holding on right outside the 22. Now you would have to think, Joe Callie, this would be in his range, even though here on the touch line, I think he's going to back himself. No, oh. he's going for touch. That cross breeze is very difficult to judge in these conditions. The success they've been finding with their forwards, absolutely a great option to kick the touch, get a strong platform, and see if they get the first points of this match here, James. This has been an absolute battle for the first 20 minutes. Still goose eggs on the board. This is how competitive this match has been. St. Mary is averaging about 90 points this season per game. Marcelli, interesting on the throw-in. Marcelli's actually throwing the ball in from the sideline. The forwards are going to work. The live forwards brought to ground here. Ryan O'Reilly holds his hand out for advantage. Blaine out to tell uh, Cowley cannot bring it in, but Bay Tops can. Little in and out move we saw earlier. Gets well tackled on the corner. Looking Blaine to hit that ball pod back in the middle. Here's giving themselves two sides to attack. Quick onto their feet onto the short side. Going back short side. Great rugby here. Oh, great tackle there. That's the number 14, Xander, taking the ball into contact. There we go, Blaine getting out the back to the number 10, switch to Harley Davidson. He's getting his motor going. No advantage, penalty back here. Playing a long advantage there, a lot of side to side movement, but the referee deemed it was an advantage in this instance. A lot of sideways rugby there, but that's Credit to St. Mary's and their defensive pressure, although the smaller team still stepping up to make the big hits against these big life forward pack. Again, they're in this position though because they chose not to clear their own 22. Enterprising play, but the pressure's firmly on St. Mary's. Absolutely, St. Mary's back themselves, but sometimes it could work out to their detriment. Being stuck within your 22, you know, that's the risk you take and be willing to play from anywhere. Life with the throw in, overthrow. Great take by St. Mary's, they get the ball back. Another get out of jail free card, Reeby holding his hands up. Life player not rolling away and again they get the penalty and again they'll go to the foot of Brewer to get them out of trouble. Life just seems to not find the accuracy within the 22 to get on the scoreboard. They have plenty of chances down there. They're gaining the territory, but they are just not converting that to points. That could come back to haunt them later in this championship match. You can't keep on going into this 22 and not coming away with points. St. Mary's is too dangerous for the squad. Yeah, they'll, they'll really rue that. Really rue the last times they've been down. St. Mary's goes to the back of the line out, not handled by the number eight, Kevin O'Connor. But they get the ball back, Reeby, out to Brewer. Looking to play rugby again from just outside the 22. Dylan taking it being, by Oxley. Trying to be held up here. The number 12 from St. Mary's doing his best to get the ball back to deck. Reeby probing. Great pass from Reeby. Oh. Excellent pass to Walter down run. the outside. Great work. Reeby from the base again. Lining up out there. Everybody's setting up to the weak side. St. Mary's absolutely wanting to attack that weak side. Brewer taking it up himself. Reeby. Looking for a forward runner. Straight hit by number two, Olu Oliver Amatagi, an All-American as well. Excellent work on this swinging gate attack. Really uh keeping life guessing. Which way are they going to go? Looks like a turnover, though. Turned over the ball. Right Life penalty. Blows it up. Life penalty. Great work at the breakdown. Excellent job at the breakdown by Hikumalu. Fantastic stuff. You got to wonder why St. Mary's isn't clearing this ball and relieving the pressure. Maybe it was the counter attack by Baytops earlier in this first half that really kind of got Brewer a little bit iffy on whether he can kick this ball open side. Yeah, I mean, he's got a fantastic leg on him. He showed before he could find space. It's all about, all about the chase line. And in a situation here, Kelly's going to step up and say, yes, please, I'll take the shot at three. <laughs> well, they've definitely tried to go for the line out. Now they're going to look for the boot. Try a different option here. Kelly setting up the T-boy coming on here. This is a deep kick, James. Putting Kelly's name to the test a little bit here. C.A.D.B.S. truly is one of the best 
American foots in American rugby. And he comes up to take it quickly. It looks good. Straight over right and the first points of the game go to Joe Kelly and Life University. They take the 3-0 lead. You knew it was going to happen at some point in time, James. Let's go back down to the field of Dan Power with the match update. Thanks, Colin. What a game so far. Just three points in it. Cowley with the penalty there going over. I tell you what, life is physically a much bigger side, but the St. Mary's intensity is huge. Big home support for St. Mary's. Almost get run over by one of their big <laughs> units now. But St. Mary's definitely a very dangerous side as well. Back to you, boys. Take care down there, Dan. We got a great kickoff started here by Brewer. The life boards do want to pick it up. Blaine finding Paris Hollis. Again, the All-American. Excellent counter rucking ability there by St. Mary's. Oh, what a hit by James Jones, the winger, putting a hurt on a forward. Zach Walker looking to move the ball inside, allowing the McElroy a good angle on his box kick. Yeah, you St. Mary's think. saying, no thank you, though. They're putting as much pressure as they can James on him. James goes back to field this. In between him and Reeby, looking to loop. He finds James. Counterattack on. He wants to back himself. He goes back short side. He's finding some real estate. James Jones still pick, picking up his feet. He offloads. Finds one of his forwards. Support is there. Again, St. Mary's looking to rumble forward. They keep on driving against this bigger life pack. Reeve finding Brewer. Stepping back inside. Getting well tackled by number five, Jake Anderson. Reeby digging that ball out, getting bottled up. Oh, wonderful tackle straight over the top. The quick tap. Quick tap by Kingsley. He's looking to play. He wants to play, sidestepping his way down the field. Number three, Dino Waldron taking the tackle on number eight. Glenn Morricelli out the back to Kingsley. Oh, out there, James Jones! Corner! Yes. Real estate. Wide open! Full back back inside. inside! St. Mary keep it alive and get thrown into touch. You would have to think that was their moment. Their moment to get the first points on the board. James Jones down the weak side. Absolutely phenomenal, enterprising stuff from St. Mary's. The excitement we've come to see and expect from them in championship rugby. Oh, excellent work on this play. Kingsley down the short side. Great pass. You could have driven a truck through that hole. James Jones down the sideline. Excellent cover defense, though. Fantastic work by Harley Davidson. Oh my gosh, James, almost nearly, nearly there. We've seen St. Mary's time and time again take advantage of that short side. Definitely something Tim O'Brien talked to their team about, and they've been exploiting the Life University pack. Hopefully works out for them here. Line out to Life, they do well to take it down. That's Excellent. again number one, Paris Hall, the All-American, take it up, setting up the platform, finding Joe out the back. He's gonna try to find touch here. Looks like it's gonna stay in. Another counterattack for James Jones. He's gonna go wide, find his fullback, Maloney. He's stepping, running, oh, Maloney's stepping. stepping, the show and go, great effort. Up the middle, setting up the platform. They're looking to reorganize down the blind side. Brewer wants it. Brewer's calling for it. No, they go the opposite direction to Kingsley, who's been incredibly active in this game so far. Absolutely, Kingsley's been, been the fire starter right now for the St. Mary's team. Penalty, quick tap, Reeve. He's going, are they back 10? He gets popped. St. Mary's retained possession. Brewer goes in to clean this ball up. Excellent St. Mary's has number play. on the, the left. is on the left. Here we go. We're going for a card. I think the ref steamed that he interfered with this play. Ranawira. Slowing down player to have a little chat. Bringing in the captain. Yep, Dean did a professional foul, came in from the side there. St. Mary's was a hot attack. They had an overlap in the corner. That situation, the referee's 100% right. Yeah, absolutely there, James. That is a yellow card. And now they're down Paris Hollis, who has been absolutely putting his physical presence on this game early on. He will be sorely missed for the next 10 minutes. But you got to think, is that a smart penalty? They definitely had the overlap on the left side. Is it worth the 10 minutes in the bin? Quid pro quo, as we say. <laughs> oh, this is the excitement that we've come to know from the St. Mary's team. Number 12, Dylan Osley, easy kick over. 
through the sticks. Wonderful stuff. And now we're even at three apiece. St. Mary's answers back. Who would have thought 29 minutes into the national championship game that there would be three points scored by the two most explosive offenses in the country? That's testament to the defense here on both sides of the line, St. Mary's and Life. Definitely two extremely well-coached teams bottling each other up. And this is championship rugby at its finest. Callie to take the kickoff in the middle. He goes long. Well taken by the St. Mary's player. He gets driven back. Now we got 10 minutes left in this half. About the time left in the sin bin. Excellent for Paris box kick there. Good pressure on. Coming out, Cowley surveying the options, oh. puts the foot down, stepping down the left hand sides. McElroy will want to find his forward shortly. Keep the momentum, keep the speed up in this game. They're trying to make St. Mary's rush around the corner and then exploit the inside gaps. Absolutely, that's Sandra Daniels taking it in. Blaine finding his fly half, getting the switch back to Harley Davidson. He is well met. That was telegraphed and he was no deception there. St. Mary's knew exactly what was coming at him. Did well to stop it there. Blaine pointing to the right, wanting a forward runner. And knock on by the number eight. Here goes Kingsley, Kingsley again. again. Danger man. Quick feet. Nice One, inside. Two, move. He's still three, going. Four. Still five going. Defenders. Kingsley oh, McGowan. They will this not man. be stopped. Absolutely great stuff from Kingsley. Great counter ruck though by Live. This is their specialty. This is life. This is what they're about. Excellent work. Out Precious wide. right off of them now. Number three, Zach Walker taking it up. Another All-American in that front row. Cali out to Baytops. He's been dangerous. Look at the shimmy and shake he's got going on. St. Mary's has a great defensive line set up. The fitness of both these squads now showing in their structure late in this first half. Eight minutes left to play in this first half. Tied at three apiece. I'm Colin Holly with James Patterson. Thanks for joining us here for the D1A National Championship match between Life University and St. Mary's. Absolutely amazing stuff here. Great rugby on display. Excellent work by Life here. They're really slowing it down. They want to play at their own pace. They're not going to let St. Mary's dictate the speed of this game. Life forwards going to work. We knew they were going to get real dirty in that engine room. Picking and going. They feel like they're bigger in the forward pack and they want to establish dominance early on. So far, St. Mary's has done well to front up, although being smaller, definitely going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bigger life pack. Blaine finding his 10 to lip. Clemente out the back to Cali. Oh, he can't handle the pass. Yeah, they'll be disappointed in that. Such a great job of building pressure. Here's the replay coming in. Kingsley, he's been so dangerous. Steps inside, steps inside another. He keeps his feet going so strong. Fend, absolutely driving forward. One, two, three, four, five defenders. Kingsley, he is the fire starter right now for St. Mary's. Absolutely the danger man on the evening for the St. Mary's squad. Yeah, and everyone's feeding off of him, Colin. You can see that. The energy he brings to that back line, they all want to do it. They all want the ball. They uh. want to be the next Kingsley. You know, you see one of your teammates have a great run or a great move, great step. It just motivates you to go and go ahead and get behind them, get in support and have your own moment. Go ahead, be an athlete, Kingsley. We got a scrum down, Reavy to put in from the Cali knock on. Great platform out the back to Brewer. Looking to spread the ball here. Brewer to Dylan. Dylan picking it up. Great oh, offload. Great offload to the fullback. He needs to find his Cooper. inside support. Showing real explosiveness and dynamics in their back line. If St. Mary's can get the spot left, they have a ton of real estate here. James Jones out uncovered to the left. Oh, great line. Great line run by Waldron. Excellent line off of that long ball. Coming it, back the short side. Oh, unlucky there. Very hot line from the St. Mary's runner. But the runner says play on, went backwards. St. Mary's still in possession. Finding Kingsley again. He's well tackled. St. Mary's smells blood. They want another try here before the end of the half. Penalty. 
Looks like they're gonna take the three in this situation. Six minutes left to go in the half. James, I think, tied three apiece. You gotta play smart rugby here. I think you take your points, don't you? This is finals rugby. Finals rugby, you gotta play smart. Take the lead. Keep the momentum going. Really play coming in, Reeve to Brewer. He gets it out to Dylan Odsley. Excellent Look work at the by Malone. Look Excellent at the offload. Amazing hand from the St. Mary's backs. We knew they are gonna be dangerous. Excellent choice here. St. Mary's is called a scrum because Life still has a player on the sideline. They're gonna have to replace one of their forwards in order to match the scrum. Great strategic move by St. Mary's here. They'll have a strong set piece and then let the backs go. That's great presence of mind, probably coming in from the coaching staff, Tim O'Brien, knowing that they're shorthanded in the front row, missing Paris Hollis, the All-American, from the yellow card from the infringement earlier on when St. Mary's was in their territory. Looking to take the advantage here. We all saw what they just did down this end of the field with a solid scrum. Absolutely. They'll look to repeat that. Kingsley is the danger man. St. Mary's willing to go for it. No tin cup in it here. Let's go. Getting a good push on. Reedy waiting to put the ball in. He gets the ball and he pops out to the back. He's looking for a pop from the eight. He gets it. He's going to go himself. Little sloppy ball there. Not what you wanted if you were St. Mary's. He's being drugged by Blaine down the field. And he gets popped by number two, Michael O'Neill. Excellent work there by Life. What a pressure relief. St. Mary's had the pressure built up. Life's able to counter. Now they can clear. With four minutes left in this half, both sides are trying to go to the half ahead or not without giving up any more points. <laughs> Absolutely, James. And you just got to love this St. Mary's squad. Running from within their 22, right on their goal line, going for the scrum, still tied 3-3. Great kick. <laughs> Exciting kick. rugby. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Life gaining a lot of purchase on that kick, right beyond halfway in Gale territory. We only have a few minutes left in this half. If Life can come away with points here, it would be absolutely massive going into the half. The momentum in their favor. We have Amatagi, the All-American, finding the number five, Jake Anderson. Campaign called him the breakout player for his team this season. The Fords going to work, getting the drive on. Great turn over there again. These breakdowns have been hotly contested today. I think some people had the expectations that life was going to come in here and bully St. Mary's up front. St. Mary's really come to the table today and said, hey, we're here. We're here to stay. We're going to fight for this. This is a St. Mary's pack, although undersized, definitely defeated a bigger BYU team and a bigger Cal team this season. They are scrappy. They're co they come here to play. They will not back down to this bigger life team. Again, two minutes on the clock, just under three minutes, actually. St. Mary's, man advantage. They're going to get the scrum they want. Are they going to launch wide? Where's this going to go? <laughs> I think if you know St. Mary's, they're going to go for it, James. Brewer to Dylan. Oh, Dylan finds right Kingsley, work. cannot find, find the hands. Oh, what a tackle. The Ta touch judge holds out a penalty flag. Personal penalty there. Ryan Aware is going to blow this one up. I think this is coming back, Colin. This is big trouble for James Jones. Big trouble. Watching on the replay here. Ball comes out the back. Here he is. Yes, there's a tip. James, unlucky. James and James. James Jones on the field. You cannot pick an opposition player up and fling him to the deck. You have to bring him to ground safely. James Jones knows that rule. He's unlucky. Sometimes the heat of the moment, it's a championship match, gets the better of you. I'm sure it wasn't malicious, but definitely not, not in the rule book. Just can't do that. Referees are conferring on the spot at the moment. I'd like to see what's going to happen. Hopefully, we don't lose a player. We want it 15 on 15, best finals footy. Absolutely. Looks like it's just going to be a penalty here. No card for James Jones. I think that's a fitting call. It was not malicious. 
I'm glad to see that. We're all here to play rugby. Absolutely. Cali looking for touch here, and again, going for the line-out platform that they had earlier in the game with two minutes left. They're going to want to get this try. This is the pivotal point in the game to end this half well. Life has had most of the territory here. It'll be a huge momentum boost for life if they can get some points on this visit into the Gale 22. You'd think they're going to drive from here. I mean, you would think, absolutely, with the bigger forward pack. But St. Mary's has been so scrappy, although undersized. They've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with this li these life forwards. Great Ball pass, well taken in the middle. Good job of sacking that. Excellent defense work, St. Mary's, and then accidental offside there, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> Again, relieving the pressure, passing up three points in the 22. That's the second time this half they passed up kickable points for, pa for Cowley. Unlucky for life there. It just seems like every time they get down within scoring distance of these St. Mary's Gales, some little piece of accuracy just not does, does not go their way. Really unlucky for the forwards not to get a good drive on there. St. Mary's looking to go quick. Lost. Blaine picks up the ball, finds his fly half, but it does not go to hand. A little bit of a scrappy play there. Finds Takutella. We're coming back. Knock on from the lineup from St. Mary's. Life, another chance to put a try on the board before half. We have the full complement back on the field for life again. This is where their scrum's really gonna put the pressure on. Absolutely, we got a steep line set with the backs here. The weak side wing inserting himself in the line right outside the number 10. Adds another extra attacker for this primary phase ball. Great scrum, excellent platform. Four on six on the outside here. Skip pass out to Cali. He gets great go for it, gets the ball back to his team. Blaine there to pick it up, going short side. Nice little pop pass back inside. Oh, Kingsley. Well driven back, Kingsley. He is really setting the tempo for his side right now. Absolutely, here comes the number seven. Always a hard runner with ball in hand, Hiko Malou. Life happy to keep it tight right now, but they have a steep line set. The number 10, Clemente asking for the ball. Maybe one more phase before Blaine chips it out. He wants it now. Clemente still not receiving the ball. Happy to keep it with the four, it's almost a turnover. He was isolated there. He's isolated now on the side of the ruck. St. Mary's in on the ball. Zach Walker did well to go there and resource that ruck. <laughs> Penalty from the side. Cowley's walking in. Think. He won't turn up this one. You got to think. Time expired on the clock here that Cowley's going to go for goal. Yeah. Give yourself the lead going into the half. It's been a well-fought match by both sides. Give yourself the lead and the momentum going into this next 40 minutes. This is finals footy, and we said it. Every point's going to count. This is going to come down to the last few plays in this game. I mean, when you got got a foot like Joe Cowley, you, you want to use it here. Absolutely. Been really impressed with this life team, doing all the right things, keeping the territory in the gale end. As Cowley sets up, sizes up the kick, looks down. And it's good. And it's good. The sure foot of Joe Kelly again gives life the lead. Six points to Kelly here in the first half. The only points life has. Three points to St. Mary's. Absolutely wonderful first half of rugby. Two teams that are extremely dangerous. Bottled up to six points to three. Commendable defense on both sides. This is turning out to be an incredible championship match here, James. Yeah, we knew these two teams were going to come out. It's been amazing so far. Both teams have matched each other up front. It seems like in the first half, St. Mary's has had the edge. Absolutely. Now, if you're the coaching staff, if you're Dan Payne, what do you tell your players so that you have to do coming into the second half? Keep ball. 
We know what possession does. Possession builds pressure and pressure leads to points. This is finals footy. Yeah, absolutely. You know Life University have had most of the possession down in the Gale territory. Now, conversely, you go to the St. Mary's Gales, pretty adventurous, running out of their own end. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. What is Tim O'Brien saying to his squad? I think he'd be proud of his forward pack. His forward pack's going out there and matching it, matching them up front and letting their backs do what they're best. Sounds like a great option here. Eagle, 1990 to 94, played in the 90 World Rugby Festival in New Zealand. Member of the 91 World Cup Championship team and the 94 World Cup. Is Chief Operating Officer for U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs in Mare Island. We have Tara Flanagan with 13 caps, an Eagle 91 through 94, a member of the 91 World Championship team, Four Nations, Can-Am, and part of the 94 World Cup, a Superior Court judge in Alameda County. Sarah Walsh with 10 caps, an Eagle 2007 to the current, current time, complete, competed in the 2007 and 2010 Nations Cup, the 2010 World Cup, in France in the series in 2013. The 2014 World Cup player pool, member of the Berkeley All Blues Women's Rugby Club. We have Melanie Denham with 20 caps, an eagle from 2008 to the present day, involved with the 2008 Nations Cup, Can-Am, 2010 World Cup, Nations Cup, 2012 Italy and France, Nations Cups. 2004 Can-Am, 2014 World Cup player pool, and a member of the Beantown Women's Rugby Club, head coach of the American International College Women Rugby teams competing this weekend. Nema Nema Reddick with 11 caps, 2010 to the present former USA under 19 and under 23 player in the 2010 World Cup. Nations Cup, France Series, Can-Am, 2014 World Cup Player Pool, member of the Berkeley All Blues Women's Rugby Club. We have Katie Doughty with multiple caps in the 15s and 7s, 2010 to the present day. Debuted in the 7s at the 2010 Davis Cup. World Cup player pool and a junior on the Penn State Women's Rugby Club competing this weekend, our champions this weekend. We also have Jessica Davis with three caps, 2012 to the present. A former U20 and college All-American debuted 2012 tour, tour to Italy and France, was in the 2013 France Series, the 2013 Nations Cup, a 2014 World Cup player pool. Senior on the American International College team that competed this weekend. We have Hope Rogers with four caps. 2013 to the present, competed in the 2013 Nations Cup, 2013 France Series, 
2013 Women's Junior All-American Tour to England and the 2013 Women's College Division I MVP and our MVP today with the Penn State Nittany Lions. And we have Phoebe Boone a, with three caps, 2013 to the present, a 2013 Nations Cup participant, 2014 Can-Am, 2014 World Club player, player Pool, and a member of the Berkeley All Blues Women's Rugby Club. We also have Irene Gardner, participated with the Eagles in Dubai in 2011, and in 2013 with the Sevens, a Cal, a Cal grad and now a member of the Berkeley All Blues where she was national championship in two fifteens and two sevens and was the MVP in 2013. A couple of men on the field, we have Chris O'Brien, a former Eagle and current Eagle coach. And we have the, our own Matt Sherman, a former Eagle player, Eagle coach and director of Stanford Rugby and Finally, last but not least, I think we have Mike McDonald, a graduate of Miramonte High School in Orinda, California, Cal Golden Bears, a professional player in Worcester and Leeds, 2006 through 2012, with 67 caps representing the United States in 67 international games, one of the most decorated of U.S. rugby players. Congratulations to all of our honored guests. We salute you all. And welcome back to Stuba Field here, the beautiful Stanford campus in Palo Alto, California. I'm Dan Power, joined by Colin Hawley. They've let me off the sideline. It was getting a little bit chilly <laughs> for the young fellow from Australia. We are at halftime here. Life University leading St. Mary's six points to three, and what a great battle we've seen so far. Colin Hawley. Oh, it's amazing defensive effort from both sides. It's 6-3. Both these teams have been explosive on offense throughout the season, and this is testament to their defense and what kind of quality match that we have here in Palo Alto at Stanford. I'm absolutely amazed by the effort put in on both sides, especially Kingsley McGowan for St. Mary's. He has been absolutely electric and putting his team on his back right now. Let me tell you, being down at ground level, watching McCown run the ball, he is definitely a spark plug. We're going to be right back with all your second half action right here from Superfield and Stanford Campus, Palo Alto. Don't go away. In the second half here, Absolutely. this man He's has right been there. a live wire there. Kingsley McGowan met with a huge tackle. That's what you've got to do with players like McGowan. Up quick, don't get him the chance to wind up. Bender now moves it across. Nice little ball. Can he get his arms free? No. Well cleaned out, though, by the St. Mary's offense. Still driving it forward. 
I don't think there's going to be much value there in the forward. Slice forwards are such fit, big guys. You can tell down at the ground level, they're just huge compared to the St. Mary's forward pack. They need to use that explosiveness out wide, such as McGowan. Absolutely. The St. Mary's forwards getting a good push on here right now. They've been doing a great job going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this bigger, bigger live pack, hopefully freeing up their backs as this match goes on in the second half. Definitely. Let me tell you, I had a chance to catch up with Dan Payne yesterday, the head coach of life in Tui Osborne. This is the kind of match they wanted. They wanted to drag it into an old-fashioned slugfest. They wanted to take the explosiveness of St. Mary's out of the game and drag them into this type of game. And they've done it so far. It's very effective, and they hold on to that three-point lead right now. Dan, you have to think that life has to get some points on the board because at some point, this St. Mary's offense is so potent. They're going to get a breakout try at some point. And you know, they want to get on the board as soon as possible to get a, get a good lead going. They have three points now. I think they want to try. Oh, yeah. Points on offer whenever they can. McElroy with the feed in. Oh. Great scrum from St. Mary's pushing them back off. They'll get the ball. The referee's whistle blows. They're going to pull it up. It's going to come back to St. Mary's. How about that, Dan? Let's see where he puts the arm out here. He's given it to life. Oh, wow. That's a tough call there against St. Mary's. I thought that was a very effective scrum. We've got former USA Eagle Mike McDonald sitting up here next to us, shaking his head. He's in agreement with the commentary team. If someone's going to know about scrummaging, it's Mike McDonald. Most capped eagle ever. Absolutely. I think he's got a little bit of knowledge on the subject. Here we go now. McElroy, ball in hand again, put it in. Isn't he a feisty little character? Oh. McElroy seemed dragging players around the first half, chirping away. Beautiful stuff from the little scrum half. That's what you want for your nine. A little bit of mongrel in that cheap dog. Here we go again. The St. Mary's scrum, very effective at pushing life back off the ball. Eventually, they're going to get one here, St. Mary's. If they keep this scrum nice and tight, the referee's going to have no option but to give them the ball. McElroy set, Clementi, fly half set out to the right there, showing no indication to kick. Not in the pocket, they're outside the 22 at the scrum though, let's see what they do. They're looking like they want to run, you're outside the 22, kicking to touch is not an option, and especially kicking the ball to these backs, as potent as they are, probably want to keep this ball in hand, see if you can find something on the outside. Yeah, interesting setup here, the way St. Mary's is set up. Fullback's almost playing directly by the scrum. You'd like to see him push a little bit more to his left. There is a lot of real estate out there. Clementi with a pretty solid foot could find green turf out there and pick up big yards. Here we go, it goes out to him. Let's the runner go through, finds Harley Davidson. He just revs his engine and goes forward, the big man. They're about 25 out from the line. Still working it, tough pass to pull in. Well met by the St. Mary's defense, driving them back. McElroy goes in looking for runners. Comes down the blind side. Still with the forwards now. This has been their strength life. Keeping it nice and tight. Referee playing some advantage perhaps for offside. Let's it go. Nice box kick from McElroy. Goes up. Some areas feel it well. They're on the counter. There's oh, a value. You're talking about the breakout try. He's got support on his outside. Can he link up? He does. He flicks the ball out. Willie nearly should have taken the tackle. Oh, play no. They're a chance. One more pass. Go, champion. He's in, in the corner. Oh. Oh. And the crowd goes absolutely crazy here for the St. Mary's Gales. A lot of the home crowd out to support the team right from Moraga. We had talked about it earlier, the potent back line, the danger of kicking to a deep three with the ability to break out at any moment. Great sidestep inside. Look at this ball inside to the number seven, Kyle Peterson. Used to be a fly half. Look at that out the back pass. Adventurous play as always from St. Mary's. And again, support is crucial. The 15, Cooper Maloney, I'll do it again and I'll get over the line. How about that work from Maloney? Makes the initial break by himself on the counter attack. Gets around, picks up the loose ball. I thought he would have offloaded to his winger there. He backs himself. You never fault a player for backing himself, especially when the result is five points. Aldsley now, he'll have the conversion to stretch it out to a 10 point to six lead. Comes in, nice oh, strike of the well ball. Struck. Just a little bit short from Aldsley though, didn't have the distance there. Score remains eight points to six, 45 minutes gone. St. Mary's, Colin Hawley, you are a genius, my friend. You predicted the breakout try. It came from the fullback, Maloney, and what a great hit back that was from St. Mary's. Absolutely, and you knew it was gonna happen, Dan. Oh, a team that scored this many points has this much experience in the danger men in the back line. You know, it's gonna be hard for, for life to keep them off the books for the entire game, it was gonna happen. Now we're gonna see how life's gonna respond here. Yeah, Cowley gets his restarted with a nice high kick right down the middle of the field. Well fielded by St. Mary's though. That's 
Shlobloom, the winger. Backing up well on the outside there. Nice little pick and go from St. Mary's. They're a much smaller, but they're a very mobile pack. Life adjusting well. Very compressed defense. Pillar post, both sides of the ruck. Very, very strong from life. As you'd expect from a Dan Payne coach side, very disciplined. It comes out now to Bender. Low driving kick. Cowley goes back to field. It gets it on the bounce. He'll sum up his options. Looks for the counter. He's got some space. He's got some speed. Cowley is oh, through. There he goes. Has he got some options inside? Draws it inside. Well defended though. All two oh. comes across in cover. Still going. Gets the ball back inside now. That's Baytops, it looks like. The winger finally puts his foot on the paint. Oh, a little shoving there between Brewer and the nine. Blaine McElroy. A little bit of how you doing after the play there, Dan. Oh, here we go. We have a chance to look in the replay. Cowley here sums up his option beautifully on the counter. Comes back to the blind side. Beautiful little dummy. Just a poor read there from the eight man from St. Mary's. Kevin O'Connor just couldn't get to his man. That was the six. Sorry, Kevin O'Connor. That was Luke Saucer. Doesn't quite get the man. But the fullback, obviously, with speed on the six. And finally, there you see just going out the sideline. And then a little bit of push and shove from the boys. You've got to love that in the final. Letting the emotion <laughs> hang out. Absolutely. Got to bring the heat. Line out one from St. Mary's. Box kick coming up. Nice high box kick. Oh, stand in. Bounce. Could be trouble. Oh. Another bounce. There he goes now. That's Schlebaum again. Beautiful bounce for him. He's on the attack. St. Mary's with the ball. Can they recover? They'll pick and go through the prop forward. That's Ryan Pratt. Great run from him. Reeve digging around looking for the football. They go on the pick against St. Mary's. And again, playing very high tempo, fast paced rugby here. There he goes, Reeve. He moves it out. Brewer, out to Audsley. He's got the try score oh, outside him. Oh, Maloney, oh. he's through again. He could go all the way, Maloney. No, drag down, what a sensational tackle. Had some support on his inside, should have looked for it. But life scramble well, they're back on side now. They've still got some numbers out here. Big numbers for St. Mary's if they can get it. Referee's got them for a little knock on. Another oh, opportunity oh. goes begging. Cooper Maloney, absolutely electric in the second half. Hit the gap. The pace on this man is absolutely unbelievable. Let's check out the replay coming through here. The try scorer earlier. Look at this ball out the back. They love that ball coming from the back. And a little miscue on defensive line there from life. And Maloney's through. Look at this cover tackle from Blaine. Absolutely the last defender to beat. Gets him down just by the jersey. Great cover tackle by life. They do what they need to do to keep him out of the end zone here. Oh, Maloney, if you would look to his outside, he had Bubba Jones there, the winger, absolutely streaking down. We saw him on a long run in the first half. Could have been an opportunity to get some more points there. Instead now, McElroy feeds the scrum for life. They're about 10 metres out from their own line, under plenty of pressure here from St. Mary's. McElroy feeds it back. That'll be Cowley. Puts that big right foot of his. Doesn't Ooh. pick up much yards though, Cowley. Under plenty of pressure from St. Mary's. And you hear a very strong round of applause from that side of the field. A very pro St. Mary's crowd here, Colin. Yeah, Moraga's right around the corner. A lot of the hometown fans here to support them. Cowley's going to want to want that back. Not getting a lot of real estate on that kick. St. Mary's, as dangerous as they are, you do not want them to have a lot of ball in your own end, especially within your 22. And they are a very proud, proud program up there. St. Mary's, one of our good friends, Kevin Swearing, played his rugby up there after the football program shut their doors and it has reaped rewards for the rugby program when they did stop playing football at St. Mary's. Kevin Swearing, just one of many who have come through that nursery of rugby up there at St. Mary's. He's got to be happy with the way St. Mary's are playing right now. I hope he's turning, tuning in and seeing his alma mater here in the national championship final against life. There we go. Nice line out. Juggled. They pull it down though. Well, St. Mary's. They've got a nice back line set out to the right. Reeve goes in. Looks for his runners. Finds Brewer. Short ball. Kingsley. McGowan. He's fire. Reeve now. Moves it over to the left. Through the prop. Uh -oh. That's Pratt. Oh, my gosh. Great little ball there. That's the All-American Paris Haas again making a crushing tackle. Yeah, big Hollis, he's had an impact, hasn't he? He's been outstanding. Look out, he's troubled McGowan with the ball. Can he get free? He does to Audsley. Uh-oh. He comes out to the winger, Shlebom. He slips over. Playing advantage, though. Referee's coming back. Let's see what he's got here. If they go quickly, they're a chance here. They're trying to get the ball across. Life struggling to get back across the field. Quick tap, there's some value. He does go. Quick tap, Bubba oh. Jones. Oh, I think he ran into a Hollis special, though. <laughs>
<laughs> Probably want to find one of your bigger members there. James Jones taking it in himself. Still gets the ball back. Reevee lets Audsley go through there. Nice little dummy run. Still there with the ball, St. Mary's. Recycling blue beautifully as he pulls it across to Brewer. He's got options. What he do? Throws dummy. Late flick. Oh. oh, McGowan taken off the ball there, I thought, by Harley Davidson. We've got a little break in play. Let's go down to my big man, the form of Highlander himself, James Patterson. What are you making of all the action down there, big fella? Cheers, lads. St. Mary's has came out in the second half, and they want to play footy. They've come out and taken it from the very first scrum to every single counterattack. At the moment, the pressure's on live, and you can feel it in the crowd here. Everyone here is getting behind St. Mary's, and they've got momentum up their ass. Cheers. Great stuff there from James Patterson down the sideline, telling it how it is. Look at he's a very passionate oh, man. Is he pointing at passionate. the camera? He's a player himself, and I bet this kind of atmosphere, he's wishing he had his boots laced up right now. Oh, yeah. He's still got plenty of fuel in the tank, James Patterson. Don't worry about that right now. Life looking for some of that fuel to get out of their own end. Feels like they've been camped down here this entire second half. McElroy, the little bull terrier. And again... Comes the question of the counterattack, Dan. You have to find touch on this if you're life. You cannot keep this ball in bounds. Cooper Maloney is absolutely too. Oh, what a push from St. Mary's. Yeah, their scrum is fired up in this second half. That's for sure. Life do well to retain possession, though. McElroy looks for his options. Goes out to Cowley. Little chip over the top. That's not the kick you want over here. Could be trouble on the counter to Maloney. He's through one tackle. No, great counter there. Beautiful stuff from Life to recover well at the winger. Kick through, could be another penalty. Life, ill-discipline starting to hurt them here. Dangerous stuff from Very Life University and St. Mary's decides to go quick. Oh, St. Mary's playing Vegas rules here, doubling down, no thoughts of going for the post. I'm not sure what Cowley was thinking there, going for a little chip, looking for a little real estate back for a cheeky little chip through, but that's not what you want to do with the St. Mary's squad. You got to pump that thing down at a touch. Malil here, the number seven, Malou, California native, getting a talking to. Let's There's see if referee pulls that. in the pocket. He's pulled out oh, a no. yellow. Oh, that's their oh, second no. one. That's going to be big trouble. The referee obviously losing patience with the live players at the breakdown, and Malou gets a rest. The big fellow will spend 10 minutes in the Simbin life, down to 14 men here. And that's their second yellow card in the national championship. Dan Payne, he's got to be furious with that. Absolutely. Cannot be happy with the second yellow card of the match. You can get away with one. That possibly stopped a try, but here on your goal line, you got to play smart rugby. St. Mary's electing to go for points here. Do you know what? I'm actually a fan of this call here. Audsley, pretty good striker of the ball. I think the three points, they've realized they got that big breakout try. We talked about that. They've been camped down this end for a long time. They haven't been able to break through again. Life's defense has figured out a lot of the offense coming at them. I think it's a good option to get three more points. Absolutely, Dan. You come into their territory you just have to come away with points. Doesn't matter how you get it, whether a try or a penalty kick, but you need to keep on getting in their end and coming away with something. That's been life's problem a little bit here as they've been in St. Mary's end. They just have to come away with nothing too often. Oldsy now kicks it right between the posts as easy as you like. Adds another three points. They jump out to an 11 point to six lead. 54 minutes gone in this national championship. Usher ringing over the field. Mike McDonald cutting some of the meanest moves I've seen since 2009. And life had plenty to play for here as they look to fight back. Absolutely. This game is definitely well within life's reach. But you got to think right now, Dan, they need to answer back hard and heavy right now. Yeah, it comes down, really it does come down on the shoulders of their forward pack. They've looked the more dangerous. Down a man. Audsley now. Wrapped up by Holliso, strong tackle from the big man playing in the prop position. Comes across to Brewer. Nice flat ball from Brewer. He has a lovely pass on him, very, very skilled. That's Michael O'Neill taking it up in the middle of the back line there. Turnover ball to life. Oh, value to the left as they can move it, Colin. McElroy goes the other way, goes down the blind side. Just rumbling it forward. You've got a couple of big forwards out here in the back line. Let's see if Cowley, he's got a strike weapon out here at fullback, can pull some players out. Comes to Clemente. He goes short. That's the eight man. Maricelli. McElroy dives back in, moves it across to Clemente again. Let's see what he can find. Finds that man, Cowley. 
Throws a nice little pass out to Baytops. He's well contained by Aldsley, though. Really impressed with Baytops and his power on the wing. Great job to keep in bounds. Yeah, there's some very impressive looking athletes from this live program. Almost a full-time rugby program down there in Marietta, Georgia. Everyone tuning in down at Life. What a fantastic facility they've built and a great program down there. Watching their boys willing them on here in this national championship game. But St. Mary's, they just keep matching them, the enthusiasm. Advantage to Life here. Offsides, run aware of the referee calls. Let's see what they do here. Quite a difficult angle for the three points. Cowley, very good kicker of the ball. Or will he just drive this into the corner and go for the line out? They've had success with the kick, Dan. They've gotten all their points off the Cowley foot. Looks like they're going to go to touch again here. Hopefully this time the live forwards can get a great line out, great platform in here, and look for a try to get back in this game against St. Mary's. It's been all St. Mary's so far in this first, the second half. You'd think that life needs to come away with something here just for their team of momentum's sake. A little talk from Ronald Weir, the referee. Throwing in the ball. Amatagi finds his mark. Let's see what they do here. They're going to try to pull this down and maul it. Very interesting play. Playing a man down with a forward in the Sinbin at the moment on the yellow card. And St. Mary showing huge dominance in the scrum. Oh. Almost scoots his way over, just five meters out from the line now. Still with life as McElroy barking at his boards, trying to get them to drive this ball forward to unleash this back line. This is the matchup that life wants. Referee's blowing it up. It's going to scrum it down to life. Now, listen, they struggled with eight men in the scrum against St. Mary's. St. Mary's should be very, very confident here going into this scrum. Oh, absolutely. I'm pretty surprised with the All-American front row of Paris Hollis. Well, Amatagi and Zach Walker, all three in the front row are all Americans. That St. Mary's has been getting a lot of purchase on these scrums. That's a very impressive front row. And you know when you come up against players like that, the St. Mary's guys, they're going to get a little chip on their shoulder. They obviously want to look in that all-American side, and they're going to try their best against that all-American front row from life. Here we go, the big boys. Look at the legs straining there in the scrum. But St. Mary's oh, just destroyed off the ball. ball. Referee's whistle stops it up again. I tell you, you can feel a little bit hard done by if you're a St. Mary's supporter. The referee very quick on the whistle with the scrums there. He may have got him for a little knock on though on the blind side. Life, get away with another one. A lot of pressure coming from that St. Mary's pack. I think they saw this as a definite challenge for them. Tim O'Brien letting their forwards know that this is going to be a big hurdle for them if they can compete at the set piece in the scrum and they're going toe to toe right now absolutely unbelievable stuff from the st mary's pack yeah hollis and walker like you said all american front rowers there taking on them ryan pratt and dino waldron from st mary's and they are giving them everything and more they can handle right now the st mary's front row ball goes in that's better from life great platform eight struggling to get it out turnover ball Let's out the back do. to brewer Kingsley. Here's Maloney now. He's in some space. Can he get three? He can't. Great shot from Cowley there. Kingsley comes over. McGowan. He's bottled up though again. Cowley, that man, the fullback, makes a second tackle. Good stuff from life. But St. Mary's on the attack. Pick up a quick 40 meters. They come down the blind side. Good, <laughs> strong tackle there. The little winger. He regretted that. Dummy. Reeve. Looking dangerous. He feeds it back. They're down a scrum half. Need to pick and go here, the forwards. They do so. They come around the blind side. That's the big man we talked about, Waldron. Still, they go forward. It's a great Reeby tackle now. by Blaine McElroy to get the big man down. Brewer with the ball outside to Kingsley. McGowan, look at those fast feet dancing around, looking for an opportunity. You just get the feeling he's going to break out at any moment. Uh -oh. He comes back to Audsley. They've got numbers. Nice little short ball there. Beautiful stuff from Peterson. It's a great line from him. He's still driving down the field. They pick and go the blind side again. Reeve will settle things down here. Let's see if he finds his 10 in Brewer. No, they're going to pick and go one more time down the blind side. That's a, the hooker in Michael O'Neill. O'Neill with the ball, lays it back. Reeve looking for his options on the right. He goes to the left. Oh, no, could oh, be no. a little offside there. He might have hit his own player. Play on, says the referee. Still with St. Mary's. They've marched this ball 70 metres now, just outside the 22. Cut ball. Out. Shablom, he goes back inside to his forwards. Good option, not much available there for the winger on the blind side. Reeve now. Brewer just demanding his forwards to come out. He wants one more pot. He needs quick ball to attack here. He gets a nice little run. Looks like Bowers or Tilson 
straight up the middle. Brewer does not have numbers on the left. He's got three backs on his feet, waiting for another platform to come in. Forwards ball, keeping it tight. Let's see what he can do. Man on man, tough pass. Beautiful stuff there from Cooper Maloney to get down to his bootlaces and scoop that up. Life could have turned this over though. They've got numbers at the breakdown. Huge numbers just flooding in from life now. Turnover ball. McElroy gets it, puts oh, it on the no. Big collision. We'll be interesting to see what the ruling is. Cowley, oh, he could be in trouble attacking the player in the air here. Play on, says the referee. I thought Cowley made a clear play at the player when he's off his feet. Some big hits coming in here, Dan. St. Mary's have the ball, though. They have recovered. A little bit of push and shove on the background going there. Geez, it's feisty between these two. There's some history there, though, Colin. They don't like each other, these squads. There's some mutual respect. But let me tell you, after last year's final, there's a lot of passion in this game. Oh, absolutely. A rematch of last year's final. 20 minutes left to play. Everything on the line. It's got to be a little scrappier. You don't care enough. That's right. Someone's going to grab this game by the scruff of the neck at any moment. You just get the feeling one of these players is going to stand up. Could be that man Brewer. Crossfield kick this value there. Oh, finding space in behind. Great bounce. Baytops, he's got to get back there. He's only got support from his eight man. Uh-oh. Maricelli, he gives him the ball. He doesn't want to get isolated. Looks like McElroy. He slips over. The mystery banana peel could have been forward. No. Baytops backs himself on the outside. He can't he's get around. He's isolated. Oh, life did well there to resource that pill. Cali, he's got to send this. Counter attack a top opportunity for Brewer in the back here. Yeah, Brewer. Doesn't he look dangerous ball in hand? Let's see what he do. He's got some options on the outside if he chooses to use it. Takes it into contact. He's well supported, though. Maloney comes in there, as does Reeve at the back now. A little scrum half. Let's see what he does. Needs some forwards. They're isolated. Not many numbers. A couple of Sam Mary's players on the ground still in that last mall. Up they get now, Reeve. Moves to the right. Audsley throws the dummy Audsley. Oh. No value there. Beautifully tackled by the live players. Accidental offside. He's got Reeve there. Unfortunately, come off his foot as it stumbled back into his own player. And here we go with the replay. Life desperately trying not to get held up behind their support. There's Blaine McElroy finding his eight man, going out to Bay Tops. Could have been a forward pass, but they did extremely well to keep this ball alive. Bay Tops, absolutely impressed with this play so far. Staying alive. Three St. Mary's defenders, they do well to resource this pill. Look at the support coming in, flying in to get this ball back. That could have definitely gone either way, but life fighting to hold on, fighting for every inch in this match. Oh, I feel like Colin Hawley's going to start doing the any given Sunday <laughs> speech here. Pieces with inches there. Al Pacino, eat your heart out. I've got Colin Hawley up here, absolutely killing it. As we get a look at McElroy, scrum, the little scrum half from life. He has just been such a feisty little character, just nipping at the heels of everyone. We've got a full complement of players here for life. The sin bin is now over. Ron Aweera having a word with the seven. Yeah, so Mary's also making a substitution. Luke Saucer, he comes off, gets a well-earned rest. Replaced by the 17 there. Alec Barton gets on the field. What a valuable substitution Barton has proved to be this season for St. Mary's as well. Nonetheless, about 47 out from their own line. Life with the put in. Split numbers. Oh, that's a better left. platform from life. Picks up at the back. Comes out. McElroy drives his ball. Very oh, good option from great. McElroy. Ball sits up though. Maloney. Great chase. Let's see what Maloney can do again. He was dangerous. He's the man who oh, scored the first try. He how did he do again. it? Oh, oh no. Knock on there. And the big man. He was absolutely bottled up by the kick chase from life and somehow made his way out of there. And unlucky to have that knock on. But let's go back to the replay here, Dan. Right there, somehow breaking through the tacklers and just getting wrapped up. The man who just came back on, Hiko Malou, making a great tackle and forcing that turnover. Yeah, good stuff from Malou there to force that turnover. We talked about this. If you get a yellow card, there's nothing you can do about it. All you can control is what you do when you get back on the field and Malou looking to make up for his indiscretion. And he definitely has there coming up with a big, almost try-saving tackle. You would think Maloney would have had all the runway in front of him to go to the try zone. Yeah, he does have some pace too, Maloney. Here we go, another change at life now. 21 coming onto the field. Kevin Lynch, he'll be playing scrum half. 
replacing McElroy. Feeds the ball in. Again, that same area scrum, just so dominant. Pushing it back, they've turned it over. Life really need to get on the same page with each other in that terms of the scrum. That could really hurt them as they lose possession. Nice little box kick oh. over the top from Reeve. Almost but a little miscue there between fullback and wing. Ball still in play. Counter-attack counter opportunity for St. Mary's. Kingsley. Kingsley He's dangerous. Here. McGowan, can he get on the outside? Marshalling his support. McElroy, he's still on the field. He might have shifted out into the 10 position now. He does well. Kingsley staying down though. McGowan. Lots of numbers for the St. Mary's out left. They want to go wide here. Brewer, he's got Oldsy on his inside. Goes to the outside instead. Beautiful little Sonny Bill Williams off oh. There's some value there. They've got forwards out there. James Finally, Jones! Some space. Bubba Jones, can he get there? McGowan hasn't moved out here. Still having troubles getting to his feet. Oh. Referee's caught it up. Oh, this is exciting stuff, isn't it? Very, very worthy of a championship game. Absolutely loving all this action here. Hope you guys are enjoying it at home. McGowan back to his feet. He's a tough customer, McGowan. No question about that. No way you're going to keep a guy like that down. He'll play to the bitter end no matter what kind of injury you're holding. You're never playing 100%, but he is absolutely a soldier right now for his team. Cowley with a clearing kick from the penalty. Again, not picking up much yards on that tight angle. Here we see Kingsley McGowan on the counter-attack. This led to their first try. It's so dangerous right Whoa. here. Trouble brewing. McGowan tries to get out on the outside. Here's where I thought things could have gone bad. His winger, the switch option was on. The defense is drifting very fast. You see the live players all pushing very hard. They know the threat that McGowan is. I felt the winger there, Nicholas Chablom, if he would have switched back on inside, there could have been some value for him. Nonetheless, life with the ball now. They keep going forward. Still in their own half, though. About 35 meters out from their try line. Yeah, we've got Blaine McElroy sliding in at the 10 spot. In for Talib. Clemente looks like he's going to be marshalling this back line. There we go. Lynch now has a little dart down the blind side. Great little oh. ball from him. Exchange through the forwards. They pick up about 20 yards down the blind side. Still going. Still going. This is great stuff from life. Beautiful, beautiful interchange from the Life University running Eagles. Referee pulls oh. it up. And he's seen a little <laughs> knock on. He may have got a call from his assistant referee. Let's go down to James Patterson. James, what do you got for us, champion? What a game we've got on our hands. Mate, I don't know where else you'd rather be. We're here in the thick of it. Crowds behind the teams, and both teams are fighting it out. It's too close to call at this stage. Yeah, you can hear the crowd up here. They're going absolutely bananas. What's the atmosphere like down like there at ground level? Mate, you can feel it in your veins. If I had my boots, I'd chuck them on and get out there with the boys. Be careful, Dan Payne <laughs> might hear that. <laughs> Thanks very much, James. Oh, James, what a, what a competitor. U.S. Eagle, previous Super 15 player with the Highlanders. I'm sure he sees an atmosphere like this, and he's just frothing at the bit. This is impressive stuff from both sides. Yes, it is. Now St. Mary's life showing a little bit in the oh. scrum. It's well picked up at the back, though. Kevin O'Connor goes for a nice little trundle down the field. Takes him up over halfway. Reevy now pushing his forwards, looking for the ball. Comes in half his jersey, missing Reevy. you got to love it. <laughs> the little scrum half from St. Mary's. Uh, good counter, counter push here by life. I don't know if they've turned it over though yet. There goes Reeve. Nice flat pass, pass to Brewer. He's got runners everywhere. No, oh! That was not the option. McGowan heavily marked. I thought there the option was Bubba Jones out the back there. The blind winger had injected himself nicely. Nonetheless, life have the ball now. Baytops. Baytops. Finding he, some space. Can he get free? No support with him. He's isolated. Here they come in droves. The life forwards cleaning it out. Lynch now. Goes across. Beautiful pass to Daniels. He takes it forward. Lynch again looking for runners. Pressure coming his way. Too slow on the pick up there from Lynch. St. Mary's bundled through, and I think they've turned this one over. Absolutely have, Dan. Great little pick up. That looks like Michael O'Neill again going for a little run. Reevy jumps in. There's value the blind side. No one there, though. Goes back to Brewer. He'll just kick this ball downfield. Let's see if he can beat Cowley. He does. He finds He's the grass. Let this oh, that go. bounce could hurt them if it rolls dead. No, Whoa. it takes a sneaky little right hand turn. And Cowley has to dot it down. He'll come out to the 22. That's not a terrible result for St. Mary's. Great option by Brewer and presence of mind, knowing that no one's back there. He's got a great foot. Didn't have really anything on an attack, so kick that ball down. Life again. 
pinned within their 22 with a 22 meter kick to come. Now you've got to be impressed with the St. Mary's forward pack. We talked about their size, definitely not matching life in size pound for pound, but their mobility, they are getting to the breakdown so quickly, which is allowing Reevy to play very, very quickly, which in turn gives Brewer opportunities outside. And like you said, you just get the feeling it's only a matter of time before one of those opportunities comes to fruition for us. Oh, what a take! Malou making up for it. What a catch off the 22. Now life have the ball inside St. Mary's half, just over halfway. They continue to come down the blind side. There's one of those All-Americans, Walker. He takes it forward. Lynch now finds the other All-American in Hollis. He's driven back, though. Good defense from St. Mary's. Life will retain possession, though, digging in. Lynch takes a backward step. Here goes the pick and go from the forwards. They pick, they drive out to the right there. They're just going to slow things down, consolidate, see if they can bring some of these St. Mary's defenders in. Another pick and go. That's Walker again. Jeez, he's a big man. Oh, he just get carries a, rubble, a few. Big man. Always tough to pick up those sort of yards from a pick and go. Walker makes it look easy. Lynch, slow ball. Uh-oh. Nice little inside ball. Baytops goes back to McElroy. Out to Cowley. Smart option from Cowley. Oh, Drops it on the kick. foot. If he gets a bounce, oh, he sits it up. He's pulled out the 56 oh, oh, something here. Could be trouble. The ground is so solid here. That's super field. The ball can either sit up or it kicks and rolls 20 extra meters. Oh, so there he's on the counterattack. Bubba Jones, he's dragged lassoed and slingshotted over the sideline there. Unlucky for life there. Oh, we got a little bit of a scrap going on the sideline. Kingsley having a few words, but Callie, great placement on the boot. And look at this, having the yellow card coming in. Big man laddering up and getting that ball, plucking it out of the air. That's exactly what life needs. They need players to make athletic plays like that to kind of spur this team into momentum to get into the try zone. With only 11 minutes left in this half, in the game, in the championship, life has got to pull something out here. Beautiful stuff now down the blind side from Malou. What a great pinch in the line out from Hollis, though, but he's forced over the touch line. St. Mary's do well to recover there after turning that line out over. They'll have another throw here. Big onus on the hooker, Michael O'Neill, to sharpen up his throws here. The jumpers, Bowers and Tilson have looked dangerous in the air. Absolutely, we got a five-point match here. Life threatening in St. Mary's territory. St. Mary's line-out throw here. If you're St. Mary's, you're up five, ten minutes ago. Do you go for it within your own 22? Oh, they've got to control the ball. I don't know if you want to kick it and give this life team possession back. I know they haven't done, played much rugby down this end of the field yet, but you just don't want to give them the ball. You'd rather keep it in hand here, play it tight and try to drain the clock. Air Brewer. Obviously, that's none of that. Uh, open side. Huge kick. Finds real estate. <laughs> great bounce <laughs> and a great chase. Schlebohm here. He's chasing down Baytops. It goes back to Cowley. Let's see what he does. He'll counter. He had some impact first. Comes Baytops. Baytops, though. Oh! Can't, can't get free. Just a jersey grab. Breaks through the tackle of Audsley. Goes back to McElroy. He's absolutely smashed into the ground. You give it out. You've got to take it too, big fella. And he takes it in spades. Still with life, though, as Lynch looks to pass it out. St. Mary's are just swarming into the breakdown. They're disrupting the, the life's pattern of play here, but they come out to the oh. right. Still running open rugby here from life. St. Mary's is still retreating. Life has a great line set out to the left. Anderson. Here we go. Oh, just the smallest of little knock-ons there. Referee Johnny on the spot picks that one up. Maybe looking for a sneaky little offload. Doesn't come to hand for him, unfortunately. And now St. Mary's, after what looked like could have been a very dangerous counterattack from Life, will be happy to have this scrum inside Life's territory. Life has done a great job with a deep three. They look like they got bottled up by St. Mary's, but I've been so impressed with Tyrus Baytops and his ability to keep his feet and keep the ball alive. Him and Joe Cowley have been instrumental in defending that kick. Brewer finding space in behind, but they're not giving up an inch, can't get that turnover that St. Mary's been looking for for that deep bomb. Yeah, very few opportunities come the way of wingers in championship games. Baytops is doing everything right to help his team win here. Look at the St. Mary's players just off your screen here to the left. They're all down stretching their calves, trying to work this lactic acid out. It has been a war of attrition here today between these two fantastic rugby programs. And they will be appreciating this little break we've had in play here. Some of the boys, especially in the forward pack, sucking in the big ones. 
They have been running at a frantic pace the last 15 minutes here. Reeby has the ball in hand. He'll feed this. This is where it matters. Very much so. Reeby comes from the eight-man pick to Brewer. Short to Audsley. Gets the fend out. He's very tall. Then needs to find the ground. Does so beautifully, Audsley. Reeby looking for his options. Brewer pointing to his forwards. He wants to set up a nice pod here. It comes through. Nice run. That looks like O'Neill again. He's had a very busy second half, O'Neill. Ball goes down. They drive over. Another nice little pick and go. Ball goes back. Pardon, that was Dino Waldron. He's wearing the headband, Waldron. That's a big penalty here. And you saw Reby oh. immediately point at the post. He wants to go for the three points. Let's see what the decision is. It's right on the cusp of his range at 40 metres, a little bit off. They're selected to go for the poles here. Big kick coming up for Audsley. Absolutely. I see you go for this. Give it a shot. You miss it. Still, life has to go all the way down the field. You put them under pressure here. You get a chance at points. If you don't get it, you come up with a hard line and stop life within their 22. It's a great option for St. Mary's right now. And you turn it into a two-score game, Colin. Takes the lead out to eight points. All of a sudden, life can't get a converted try and do anything. They've got to score twice, whether it be a try and a penalty or a converted try, penalty, or a couple of tries. But big kick here for Audsley. We saw him have a shot from the sideline not too long ago to try to convert the try of Maloney. Came up a little short. Let's see if he can hit this one just a touch sweeter. Talk about BMT, Dan. Big match temperament. Audsley now comes in. Hits it nicely. Oh. Very nicely from oh. Audsley. Oh. Oh. And he's got it. it. That's a massive <laughs> kick. He's Dylan got Audsley, it. You little champion. <laughs> BMT in spades, Dan. Here we go, Cowley with a quick restart. Life wasting no time coming back. The man of the moment, Audsley, he fields the kickoff. Great job from him. St. Mary's need to recover possession. Look for Brewer to clear this ball. Penalty! Oh, life just ill-disciplined there, looking to play it quick. Life taking their time here, knowing that the clock Taken away. Brewer looking to find touch, taking his time. He's been so good with the foot today. Sends this sailing, getting great purchase on this kick. Wonderful stuff from Brewer. Look at this replay here. Slotting up 40 meters out. What a booming kick. You want it to go, and it does. Another three points makes it a two possession game for St. Mary's. Here we look at the slow motion. It's a championship <laughs> moment, isn't it? You feel like you're in one of the cheesy Hollywood team movies with the basketball <laughs> rolling around the rim as that ball just creeps over the crossbar. There he is, Audsley again. He's met midfield by life, though. Crunching tackle from them. Reevy now pulls it down. The forward's just going to start rumbling it forward. There goes O'Neill on a great little run, the hooker. Here we go, St. Mary's now. Look at them just controlling. They're going to slow the tempo down here. Just pick and go, pick and go. Possession's going to be key. They're probably pretty happy with territory right now. Camped out just inside life's half. Life can't sit there and let them take their time with the, with the ruck. They've got to be in there fighting, disrupting play. Absolutely going crazy. A sense of urgency here. Great kick from oh, Maloney. Oh. Great hands. Oh, just unfortunate. The skill of Cooper Maloney is coming to the front here. <laughs> the cream is rising for St. Mary's. He's had an outstanding second half, Maloney. And again, St. Mary's. Couple minutes left to play. Still going for it. Not playing reserved. Absolutely playing like it's the beginning minute of this game. Nice little kick through by Brewer. Amazing stuff. St. Mary's just going for it all the way. It's what got them here. That's the style of rugby they've played all year. You don't want to see him. A team that changes in a championship, they're always going to have troubles winning. St. Mary's, they're going to live by the sword. They'll die by the sword. And at the moment, they are living and living well. <laughs> Absolutely, Dan. Brilliant stuff from here. You got to think life has to score quickly. You need to get this ball, ship it right. Bay Tops waits anxiously out on the outside wing. You get some of the life supporters in the crowd cheering on their team. Hoping for a, a moment of brilliance from their squad. Yeah, they're going to need some brilliance. The man who started at nine, McElroy, he's going to be that one to produce it. He's got to get the ball in the hands of Cowley. He's looked very dangerous at fullback today. 
comes back now. Lynch steps back, looking for the eight-man toss. It's not false coming to him, though. Referee's going to pull it up, repack a scrum. Still, the ball will sit with life. But that just chews up some more time, Colin. We look at the clock now. Just over three minutes left to play, needing to score twice. The mountain, it continues to grow for this life team. Sense of urgency here for life. Getting this ball to possession game. They need to marshal this ball down the field. Go 80 meters, score, get the ball back. And win the kickoff, definitely doable. Here we go, Lynch now at the back of the scrum. They pick it off and go for a little run there through Maricelli. Referee brings it up again though. They're and gonna they repack can. the scrum. More time ticking off the clock here, Dan. Just eating it, so Mary's are loving this. Oh, They're not worried you? at all. Down to two and a half minutes here. The clock is, you know, the viewers are seeing at home, shows 79 minutes. The clock we have at the stadium, which is what we've been going by at two minutes and 22 seconds and still running. For all you St. Mary's viewers watching and the live viewers sitting on edge, just hoping for an opportunity for your squad to get back into this game. Lynch now with the put in. Feeds it in, that's a better scrum from life. They pick it up from the back now. That's Maricelli, they move it across. Cowley, what can he do? Looking to link oh. up. Quick ball has got to come from this ruck. Sense of urgency here. Going short side. Three on two. Not what you want. Getting choked. Almost bringing it into touch. Great job from James Lynch there oh. to get to his namesake. Got to play quick here if you're live. Cowley with the ball. Got to ship it wide. Maricelli with the ball going across field as well, Matt, though. Ball goes back now. That's with Plattle. McElroy. He shifts it on. Minute 26 on the clock. It's just ticking away here for life. So Mary's defending valiantly. They really oh, want no. that championship. Oh, Maricelli, the eight man, unfortunately, a tough pass down at his bootlaces. He can't pick it up. A little knock on. And with a minute 10 left on the clock, so Mary's will just saunter over to this scrum in no hurry at all. Absolutely. Ron Aguirre calls a, a knock on by St. Mary's first. We've got a live scrum. Oh, there we go. Yeah, originally probably playing advantage for a knock-on. They've come back. They have got to score here, Dan. They have got to get this ball, ship it out to their backs, get a strike move, whatever you got to do. Keep the ball alive until you get under the sticks. There we go now. The replacement scrum half lynch with the ball. He gets a penalty. They've got to go. Got to go. Got to go. They do so. They bring it out. McElroy, he moves it across now. That's with the outside center. Davidson. He gets a ball oh, back Brewer. to Kelly. Kelly loses can it. Through? Brewer, can he get another foot to it? He can. It's, it's a, a foot race. race. Brewer's going to get there. Oh, oh McElroy. He could be in trouble, McElroy. Oh. It won't matter. They're just inches from the line. St. Mary's, can they close it out here? Ten seconds on the clock. They've got it one anyway. Straight They're going to finish the, the try. St. Mary's, the Gales have done it. They've claimed the Division I title. Champions 2014, and they're finishing in dramatic fashion. You knew it was going to be a hard ass for life to go down. Two possession game as it was. You get a score, get the kickoff in, and score again. But Brewer coming through with a great play. Here's the replay. Aaron pass there. He gets the ball, kicks it through. Great presence of mind. It's a foot race. He's got big tops coming down on McElroy. has been there all day long. Try saving tackles. Another kick through. Look at the push up by Blaine McElroy. But then again, the support from St. Mary's is there. In there in numbers. Reeve ducking in, keeping the ball alive. St. Mary's there in force. Another pick up and straight through the guts for the final try of this national championship match. That's Alec Barton, the try scorer. But then there's number 12, absolutely instrumental in this victory, Dylan Audsley. We are in the injury time here at Duba Rugby Field at Stanford <laughs> University, Palo Alto. There must be just seconds on the clock. St. Mary's all but wrap things up here by the score of 19 points to six, 13 point lead. I don't think there's enough time on the clock, maybe to get one or two plays as Cowley gets things restarted. Goes down to St. Mary's. 
the try scorer, Alec Barton, the super sub. There we go, Brewer picks it up. He's going to slowly run away and hoofs it out into the crowd. And they're going to win it. <laughs> the celebrations are going to start here. St. Mary's, your 2014 Division One national champions are flooding onto the field. Absolute pandemonium here. They've won the championship. They've done it, Colin Hawley. What a match. Oh, amazing stuff. As the fans run on the field to congratulate their team, the hometown crowd coming out to celebrate with the Moraga team, the Gales. St. Mary's coach Tim O'Brien has got to be so happy of his squad coming through this season. They've done amazing things, being both BYU and Cal to get to this, this stage, this national championship stage against a great life team. St. Mary's, so dangerous, did what they had to do, played smart, absolutely wonderful play from them. Amazing stuff. Garrett Brewer there on your screen. The fly half, absolutely instrumental in this victory, leading from number 10. Amazing stuff from him as they celebrate and roll around with McGowan. Yeah, you talk about Brewer. He was going to be one of the most heavily defended players from the St. Mary's. McGowan as well, Kingsley McGowan. They did what they had to do, though, especially Brewer. I was really impressed with his game management, the way he controlled things. And then the fullback, Cooper Maloney, talk about injecting yourself in the game in the second half. Wasn't he great? Oh, absolutely. I think a lot of the first half was Kingsley McGowan and the plays that he was making. Second half, Cooper wow he just had some amazing breaks that put his team on the front foot i think that combination with garrett brewer finding space behind and putting life under pressure with his boot two deadly combinations that life just couldn't come back couldn't come back and battle back for the victory here st mary's on top 21 to 6. you won four of these championships with cow rugby how are those guys feeling right now it's just an amazing experience to come this far with the team that you all buy in together. You all are dedicated to this mission to come here at Stanford and win a championship. I feel so happy for the St. Mary squad and I feel for life. Hats off to Life University. I've been on the other end of that as well. Both teams deserve to be clapped off this field for the impressive show of rugby sportsmanship and talent that they brought to this field today. Amazing display of American rugby in this country. Fantastic spectacle to watch. I for one enjoy it. I'm going to crown them. I think St. Mary's is the number one college rugby team in the United States for 2014. And they deserve their championship here tonight. Oh, absolutely. Hard to argue against that, Dan, after this performance here tonight against this good of a life university squad. We're going to queue up some highlights here from the second half, and there were plenty of them, most of them coming from St. Mary's in just a moment. And we're going to get a look at those. But for now, we talk about life. We talked to Dan Payne, such a young squad, full of freshmen. They'll be back next year, you have to think. Absolutely. Uh, Dan Payne's going to be happy with the performance put in by his forward pack. The three All-Americans, they did with the can. Kind of an X-factor unknown in the back line to go against such a potent St. Mary squad. But, you know, there's always next year. There's always building. You know, teams like this, organizations like this, they're going to be fighting for the championship every year. They went, they met each other last year, met each other this year. You know, they're just going to keep moving forward. I absolutely love the advancement of rugby in this country. It's, it's been absolutely a pleasure to see where it's come from, especially St. Mary's being from Berkeley in this area, seeing them come to this stage and get this title absolutely fitting for this program as we check out some highlights from the match. And this is the man right here, Cooper Maloney. He turned the match on its head with this beautiful individual run. Not only that, he gets hit off the ball there. One bounce, he's back into it, picks it up, backs himself, gets himself around the live players and speeds his way to the corner for a try. He was absolutely outstanding. You look at the final scoreline of 21 points to six. Points were for premium, so tries very hard to come by, and Maloney was outstanding. Look at Cali here. He was doing all that he could do. I was so impressed with Baytop's performance. He did uh, all he could from the wing position, keeping the ball alive. I, didn't, I don't remember him ever going to the touch, but he was absolutely awesome on the wing. Very proud of his effort tonight. And another man who had a big game and a big effort was Dylan Audsley, the inside center. He ends up hitting the penalty that we kind of felt put them far enough ahead, eight points ahead, where they kind of felt comfortable. They still had some work to do, and they end up scoring a late try. But Audsley, he defended fantastically all day in the centers there. And here that kick, what a, what was you call it, a big time moment. <laughs> a big match temperament right big there. Big match step temperament. Up, hit a 40 meter kick to get your team ahead by, by two scores. Absolutely wonderful stuff. And here's one of the better players on the day, Garrett Brewer. 
finding space, finding his foot. He's been great with the foot all day, getting pushed off the ball, but getting that opportunity to get his team there at the end of the game, getting back to his feet. Reedy, so good on the day. He's that he's that sheepdog who's been all day Marshall as far as organizing. They get a great try there. And there the man, Garrett Brewer, the 10, running back and kicking it in a touch and celebrating vigorously for the national championship here at Super Rugby Stadium at Stanford. Yeah, how good is that? Joey Reeve, the little scrum half. He's got ripped jersey, ripped shorts, skin off him everywhere. Absolutely loving it. We're going to go down to the field now. Your presenters for the national champions, USA Rugby CEO Nigel Melville. USAR board member Will Chang, you see Will there, just handing out some medals. D1A Commissioner Kevin Battle and the USA Rugby Collegiate Director Rich Cortez handing out the medals to the champions and also to the runners-up Life University. Medals to uh, St. Mary's Gales, USA Rugby CEO Nigel Melville, USA Rugby board member Will Cheney, D1A commissioner Kevin Battle, and USA Rugby collegiate director Rich Cortez. Presenting the runner-up plaque to the Life University Running Eagles. Running after them is USA Rugby Collegiate Director Rich Cortez with the presentation of the second place award. USA Rugby Men's Division 1A Championship Trophy to the St. Mary's Gale. And now, the MVP for our championship game, Cooper Maloney. St. Mary's Gales are national champions.
And there you have it, the 2014 men's D1A champions and MVP, Cooper Maloney, a very fitting MVP. They take out the championship. For Colin Hawley, James Patterson and myself, thank you for joining us tonight. There's more.